Hello and welcome to the second technical session for the six day startup. Today, I'm gonna to take you through all of the major punches used in boxing. Now there is a massive range of punches in boxing and there are different ranges in which these punches can be applied. So today I'm gonna to take you through all of the fundamental versions of each punch rather than focusing on all of the different variables that they can be thrown. This is the best place to start when you learn your boxing punches. Okay, so the first punch that we're gonna start with is straight punches. Now with the straight punches, they're divided into two different kinds of punches, the jab and the cross, or the lead hand and the cross. You hear lots of different terminologies, even I mix it up, but generally speaking, when you're in your boxing stance, you got your lead foot at the front, your rear foot at the front, as we learned in the previous lesson, and then you have the jab and the cross that correspond to those feet. So in this instance, if my left foot is forward, it means that my left hand is my jab hand, and that my right hand is my cross hand, or you know, my, my rear hand or my straight right, whatever it may be, okay? So you've got jab and you've got cross. Those are two of the most frequently used terms that you uh, hear when it comes to referring to straight punches. The lead hand is the jab hand and the rear hand is the cross hand. Okay, so starting off with a jab, I want you to get into your boxing stance. First and foremost, in your boxing stance, with your guard, so fingertips to the temple, elbows in and chin down. Now, when it comes to throwing the jab, you want to throw the jab off that nice tight guard. So from this position, I'm not doing any detours or any telegraphic movements. I'm not dropping my hand. I'm not lifting my elbow. From this nice tight guard, I'm going to stretch my arm out. I'm going to rotate my body and I'm going to tuck my cheek into the shoulder. Sorry if I'm muffling the microphone. The cheek gets tucked into the shoulder like so and my chin stays down. And then I come back to my guard exactly as I started. Okay, so the jab, I'm gonna show you side on now. I'm in my stance. From here, nice tight guard, elbows are in, and I'm gonna roll my torso, my feet stay in position, I roll my torso, and I clench on impact, nice tight fist on impact. I chuck my cheekbone into my shoulder, and I keep my chin down to my chest. The opposite hand needs to stay nice and tight at the guard. Okay, and then you bring it back. A good way to help you understand the rotation behind the punch is to rather focus on the punching shoulder coming forward, focus on the opposite shoulder pulling back. So for example, as I throw my jab, I roll my left shoulder forward, yes, but I'm also pulling my right shoulder back. That's gonna help me keep my weight in the center, okay? So what I want you to do, elbows in nice and tight, chin down, you're pushing that hand out, you're clenching on impact, you rotate so that your fist has rotated and your palm is facing down, I've pulled my opposite shoulder back, the opposite hand stayed at the guard, elbow in, chin down, and you come back to the guard. We're gonna do this nice and calm. Boop, throwing that jab for one minute, yeah? We're not going hard and fast, we'll have a chance to do that later. Elbows in, nice jab, yeah? One minute, let's go guys. Excellent work. Now we're gonna move on to the cross. So naturally, because of the positioning of your feet, your cross is set a little bit further back. So you've gotta really make sure that you're rotating behind the shot. Okay, so in this instance, same thing, nice tight guard, elbows in, chins down, hands up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate that shoulder, I'm gonna stretch out that hand, palm facing down on impact, clench that fist, cheek into the shoulder, opposite hand up. I know there's a lot of information here, that's why I'm really breaking it down. I want you to spend some time doing this and, and, and cracking down on the technique, okay? And I'm making sure that the, my rear foot is pointing forward and I'm coming up on the, off my heel a little bit as I throw that shot, okay? So nice tight guard, chin down, hands up, and I'm rotating behind that shot, pulling my left shoulder back or my lead shoulder back and then back into position, yeah? Out and back and make sure when you finish the shot, you come back to the guard. So my fingertips leave my guard, 
I make contact with the target and then they come back onto the guard. Let's get this done for one minute. Excellent, okay. Now to conclude the straight punches, we're gonna be throwing combinations of straight punches. So I want you to lead with a jab, just for now. You're gonna throw a jab, a jab cross, and then a jab cross jab. What's important is a transition from one punch to another. So when I throw a jab cross, for example, I'm gonna be throwing my jab. Now my shoulders have gone side on. If I were to drop my hands from here, this is the position I'm in. Now as I pull that hand back, I wanna transition very smoothly into that cross so that I'm not spending too much time between the jab and the cross and allowing my opponent to slip in any punches. So you wanna throw your jab, you fixated that, that fist on the target, and then you're gonna replace it with the cross. You wanna keep your weight in the center also. You don't wanna be leaning forward too much, being too top heavy or leaning back. Weight in the center and rely on the rotation of your trunk and pulling those shoulders back to keep yourself nice and balanced. So as I said, you're gonna go jab, jab, cross, jab, cross, jab. Let's get this done for one minute. Excellent work. Okay, moving on, we're gonna be throwing the hooks. Now the hook's a round shot, and you wanna make sure that you're keeping that shot nice and head height, okay? When you throw your hook, you're gonna start off in your boxing stance with that nice tight guard. It all has the same starting point. Now, when you throw your hook, you wanna avoid, just like I said with the straights, any telegraphic movement. You don't wanna be winding it up from yesterday to throw that shot. Your opponent's gonna see it coming. The likeliness of you being successful with that shot is very low. So. When you're throwing your hook, we're gonna start off with a lead hook, and we're gonna start with the kind of like a mid-range hook, okay? Again, there's lots of ranges when it comes to these punches. So from this position, I wanna be lifting my elbow up, okay? And I wanna lift my elbow up level with my shoulder. You want it to be shoulder height, you don't want that level low. And you want your palm facing down. There's a lot of controversy behind this. Some people say that it's better having the palm facing out, some people say the palm facing down. For now, we're gonna do it with the palm facing down, just to have some control in our drills. So, from here, I'm gonna lift my elbow up. My palm's gonna face down, elbow's level with the shoulder, palm facing down, and I'm gonna rotate behind the shot. I'm gonna rotate behind the shot. It's about the body rotating behind the shot. That's where you're gonna get your power from. You're also gonna get your power from your legs. So if you watch my feet, when I throw that lead, lead hand, my elbow comes up, my palm faces down, okay? And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up on my lead foot and I'm gonna rotate. My heel comes off the ground and I plant my rear foot, bang. And then I'm back into position. Sometimes you throw a hook and you won't put so much rotation in the torso and the feet. But generally speaking, you wanna come up on the ball of your lead foot, you flatten your rear foot, the elbow comes up and I rotate on that lead foot with the palm facing down and I drive my body behind it. You also wanna keep your cheek in, inside that shoulder just like the other punch. 
okay? So in this instance, I've got that nice tight guard, the chin's down, okay, I'm going flat on that back foot, elbow comes up and I drive behind it, cheek into the shoulder, muffling the mic again, sorry guys. Like that, other hand stays up tight, chin is down. We're gonna be doing this for one minute, guys. Let's get it done. Beautiful work, let's move on to the rear hook. Exact same concepts, elbows up, palms facing down, cheek into the shoulder, chin down, etc. Again, it's from the rear, so you wanna kinda of travel that shot a little bit further out. You wanna make sure that you're hitting that target, okay? So, from this position, elbows in, chin down, I'm gonna lift that elbow up, always lead with that elbow. Lift the elbow up, palm down, and I'm gonna rotate behind the shot, okay? My left foot is planted, and I'm coming up onto the ball of my rear foot now. Okay, so the left foot stays planted, and I'm coming off the ball of my rear foot, and I'm rotating it in a little bit, just so that I can drive the hip and the shoulder behind that shot. Not too much so that you don't have contact with the ground or you're too loose. You still want to have a firm grip of the ground when you're throwing your punches. Okay, so with the rear, the elbow comes up, the palm goes down, the cheek into the shoulder, and you rotate. The body does a lot of the work, guys, okay? Let's do this one minute. Elbow up, palm down, rotating behind that hook with the chin down and the foot coming behind it. 60 seconds. Wonderful hooks. Okay, let's get into the uppercuts. So the uppercut, you're trying to get underneath the chin of your opponent, all right? You're coming from that up kind of angle, okay? This is a nice narrow punch that you want to try to squeeze in between their guard, okay, and come from underneath. So we've got punches coming straight ahead, we did the straights. We've got punches from coming from around there, the hooks. Now we've got punches from coming nice and low. Now it's important, again, no telegraphic movement. Again, when I refer to that kind of thing, you don't want to be having too many giveaways. You don't want your opponent to see the punch coming, so it has to be very small movements. In this instance, again, we're doing a kind of mid-range uh, uppercut. So, from that boxing stance and guard, nice tight, what you're going to be is you're going to be rotating and you're going to be dropping that fist, and the gauge I want you to use is about chin height, your chin height, okay? And you're separating the fist, you know, about half a metre away from you. So you're going to go, boop, it's chin height and then you're lifting up. Okay, very simple. And that has to happen in a nice smooth kind of fashion. So I'm going boop and lifting and then back. Boop and lifting. Notice I'm pulling my opposite shoulder back to drive that shot forward. Okay, nice tight guard and I'm lifting up behind that shot. Cheek is into the shoulder that you're punching with. Other hand is nice and tight at the guard. The chin is down and you're punching down the middle. You don't want to be punching on an angle like this going diagonal with the shot. It needs to go straight down the middle. And you can see exactly why. If you, in front of a mirror, this would be really helpful so you can direct that punch in the right direction. So with the lead uppercut, nice tight guard, elbows in, chin down, 
I'm turning my shoulders, I'm dropping that fist so that my palm's facing me. Have your palm facing yourself, all right? About chin height, and then I'm lifting up, and then back to the guard, nice and smooth. Boop, and then back to the guard. Boop, and back to the guard. What I do with my legs is I kind of dip a little bit. I dip and I lift up, yeah? I dip and I lift up, so I'm making this a compound movement. Let's get this done for one minute. Excellent work, let's get this rear uppercut going. Same story, it's a bit further back, you gotta have a little bit more rotation, pull that lead shoulder back behind the shot, straight down the middle, palm facing you, cheek into the shoulder, keep the opposite hand up. A Little bit of a dip behind that uppercut so you can generate a little bit of, little bit of power behind that shot. Let's get this done for one minute. Excellent, okay, the last punch that we're gonna to cover today is the body rip, okay? The body rip, you're aiming for the ribs. And you wanna to try to navigate that fist around your opponent's guard. So you will, you will vary the way you position your fist on this shot. I'm not a fuss how you wanna do it. If you wanna mix it up into a kind of an uppercut, a hook. The way I like to do it is on a bit of an angle, okay? So imagine your, your opponent's guard, they got their elbow here nice and tight, show your side on. And you wanna be trying to drive that fist underneath that elbow or around the, around the side of that elbow or straight down the middle. So you will vary the way you position your fist and the way you drive it in. Again, I'm just showing you one way to do many kinds of punches, okay? So in this instance, nice tight guard. Again, I like to throw it in between an uppercut and a hook to the body. So what I like to do is from this instance, get my head off the center a little bit with my lead hand. I drop my fist, okay, and I'm protecting myself with the other hand, and I'm just gonna use my hips and my shoulders to drive that shot into the body, boop, and then quickly bring it back to the guard. So it's a bit of rotation behind the shot. You drive behind that shot, keeping the other hand up. Again, my fist is on this kind of angle. It's not quite a hook. It's not quite an uppercut, it's halfway through, and then I'm back to that guard, okay? So I'm dropping that hand, and I'm kind of dropping my waist and loading up that shot, boop, and then driving. So I'm getting a little bit of torque behind the shot. Again, you don't wanna be staying upright, dropping your hand, straightening it out, and flapping it into your opponent's side. It's too telegraphic, they'll see it coming. Nice tight guard, you kind of drop a little bit with your hands up, you drop that hand, and then you drive it behind it and quickly back to the guard. You don't wanna to spend too much time down there. Make sure you're getting your head just ever so slightly off the center and then bang. Let's get this done for one minute.
Okay, moving on to the rear hand with the body rip. Same thing, again, you're a little bit further away. It is a higher risk shot because your opponent will see it coming from further away. They've got more time to process the information and combat the shot. So again, we've got that nice tight guard. You're gonna be dropping that hand, dropping it, all right? I like to get my head off the center a little bit before I throw it. You don't always have to, depends what situation you're in. We can go on tangents here. You're gonna drop a little bit into that, that rear foot and then you're gonna drive behind it into the body. Yeah, you're not coming up too high, it's not an uppercut. You're driving into the body. Make sure the shot is driving towards that body. Again, here, boom, rotate and then back to the guard. Rotate, my right shoulder comes forward, my left shoulder goes back into the guts and then back to the guard. Let's get this done for one minute. Okay guys, that's what we're gonna leave it at for today. What I want you to do is practice all of those individually on the left and right, and then practice them alternating. The same formula that we use for the straight punches, jab, jab, cross, jab, cross, jab. I want you to do with your hook, so hook, 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 and likewise with the uppercuts and the body rips, okay? Then furthermore, moving on from that, you can make up combinations. So you might go jab, you might go jab, uppercut, jab, uppercut, hook, etc., etc. Get creative, have fun with those punches. I'll see you in the next session.